I tried making a video like this, however, the lighting was really, really fucked up for some reason. And I think I fa finally found a way to get around that shit, because it was getting really fucking annoying. Turns out it was... This thing, this lamp wasn't radiating that well. There was still that fucking light glimmering over there. And it's also because of this and the back lighting. So a lot of variables affected it, but that's not what you're watching this video for, right? Now, I made a video of another mecha anime from Gainax called Gurren Lagann titled Spiral Energy and I connected it to a lot of political philosophy and just the nature of humanity but this time since it's a different me let's try a different anime and I didn't do this deliberately turns out I was just thinking about the anime some more and I want to just jump at some of the subjects this is Neon Genesis Evangelion and for those of you who don't know I was getting, re I was really into this anime during May, and I think for the whole fucking summer, and I was definitely waiting for the movie to show up so I can get an idea of how it's gonna be. The movie definitely, the third rebuild film, deviated from the original plot at a crazy level, which is funny considering the first rebuild, the only difference was like the red water and some a weird stain on the moon. Which you'll un understand if you actually were into the series and you could pay attention. The second series deviated definitely near the end and it was actually kind of badass. Well, there were a lot of deviations, but not nearly as off the chain as the third rebuild. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the original series. Starting with the television series and the movie. Now, the writer... And who's this guy was undergoing depression at the time, and since he's a university fuck, I mean, a few years after he was finished with Neon Genesis Evangelion, he moved towards doors opening. Could be a serial killer. We don't know. This might be my last video. If that's the case. Uh. Now, one of the major, he, he left and he started doing short films, which were put on Japanese film festivals. I think Japanese film festivals, I don't know. But, you know, he's an artsy-fartsy guy. He's one of those university fucks. Although, I don't like labeling people that way, but I guess he's been institutionalized a little bit. So, there's a lot of tangents of postmodernism. However... Despite that, this is probably the closest a series has ever come to being a post-modern epic with its own mythology. This is as close as it will ever get, and I'm pretty sure that anything else that will try to reach this will be parody. However, it's not... It's not really as postmodern as people think. People say, oh, Shinji's a pussy. Uh, Misato and Asuka are just fucked up people. And Ray's a doormat. Well, a lot of these characters are heavily flawed. And I think you can say that there's not a lot of characters in this series that you can actually hope to see make it. However, if you understand that Shinji is supposed to be the exceptional way. Shinji is supposed to be the character that, yeah, he's fucked up, but he's fucked up the least. You kind of want to see this guy walk out. Because there's a lot of deaths in this series, and some of them are really, really fucking tragic, but especially with Karu. I mean, a lot of people say Karu didn't deserve to fucking die. I mean, just because he was an angel, the accident of birth led him to fucking die. Other than that, if Kaoru was born a normal person, he'd probably be the best character in the series. If he was born like a human, then 
he'd probably be the greatest character in the series, and he'd probably be the one to make it because he's the best one, but because of accident of birth, he was born from Adam or Lilith. I forgot which one since I'm a little rusty. And there you go. But the main subject is the ending of the television show where all four of the main characters, Shinji, Asuka, Rei Ayanami, and Misato were basically classified. With Shinji being the codependent, borderline personality disorder. I wouldn't call him a borderline, but he does definitely does follow a bunch of Cluster B personalities. He tries to be the martyr and say that he doesn't have a lot of choices in what he does. Yet yeah, we tend to see that anytime he tries to escape, he usually changes his mind and goes back to piloting the Ava. So he does have some choice in the matter. He's just bullshitting himself and everybody else when he tries to be a little bitch nigga. But the guy is our protagonist. He's the guy we want to see make it, essentially. At least I hope so. Because I can't be the only one that was thinking, well... You know, I like to see Shinji grow out of this and become a better person. And technically, in the end, he's implied to be a better person. So, I guess that's why there's that resolve, even though the endings are cryptic and idiotic as all shit. Now, Misato is histrionic in the sense that she likes attention. And she wants everyone to... Look at her in a way. That's sort of her thing. And Asuka's like this, but she's more of a narcissist who's interested in glorification. That's why she wants to be the very best. The best Ava pilot, the best this, the best that. A very competitive ego, one could say, where Misato, at least, she knows what her drawback is. She doesn't want Shinji to see her ugly side because Shinji, well... She kind of notices Shinji's problem. She sees a little bit of herself in Shinji. She doesn't want to fucking hurt that guy. He, she knows that that guy, he doesn't deserve any of this. And he doesn't deserve any of this. I mean, basically, yeah, he he is bullshitting just because he has some abandonment issues. I think the manga gives a better job of giving exposition to him and seeing what he was doing when he was living with his grandparents. But... Despite that, to come in at 14 and pilot an Ava and hold the rest of the world on his shoulders, I mean, yeah, that's a good responsibility, and he can't be bitchy about that, but take all the bullshit people are giving him. I mean, if anything, having to lose your best friend at episode 16, that's, that's ridiculous. And... On numerous occasions, almost being left to die. They were going to try and leave him to die because they thought, oh, he was a lost cause. Especially when he gets absorbed by Lilith on numerous occasions. Yeah, that's that's really fucked up. So, yeah, in some ways, oh, losing Karu, hell yeah. He loses a lot of fucking friends. That That's what he doesn't deserve. That's what he doesn't have to deal with, but you know what? It happens. And then... You got Rei Ayanami, and Rei Ayanami has the death drive in her. Obviously, she's emotionless. She's not emotionless. She just doesn't understand emotions. Kind of like nobody's in Kingdom Hearts, too. Or Chain of Memories, even. I don't give a fuck about Dane's. She understands emotions, but she has a death drive. She has a death wish. I mean, that's kind of her motivating factor in dealing with... Guys like Gendo Ikari, and a lot of these guys are pussified, so at least this series under, understands the pussification of males and douchebagisms of females. And that way, it, I that's kind of how I see it as the postmodern mythology, or the closest it will ever get, because it understands this bullshit. It understands this bullshit and it tries to create some kind of Judeo Christian. Nietzsche hybrid thing with 
Eva's, Adam, Lilith, Angels, Instrumentality, say a lot of where all these organizations are United Nations in terms of storyline. So it identifies the evils of globalization. And I didn't find a lot of antagonists that we know are antagonistic in some way, shape, or form. And it identifies protagonists as... It identifies a lot of gray characters that do antagonistic and protagonistic things. A lot of stuff that we may or may not disagree with. But... They're just... Of, collateral damage of a broken society so Shinji because of essentially his protagonistic role and his role in holding together the world is the de facto protagonist if it was Kaoru then I'm sure his series would have been a lot better in that sense even though he is a little bit weird and the manga he does take that dark role Oh, it's an illogical dark role, a dark role nonetheless. But going into the instrumentality itself, which is what the anime and movie both have, the anime has less exposition, but some of the things that you should notice are the divisions of the id, ego, and superego. That's a fan theory, so... It shouldn't be trusted. A lot of people divide the characters based on Sigmund Freud. And while there is some justification in it, it's not really a handy theory because it's oversimplified. It's better to identify the characters based on a mix of various Cluster B personality disorders. With Shinji being the guy that's hopeful and... Actually, now I think about it, Ray. And the way she follows Gendo, that's kind of codependency, in a way. So that is a cluster B issue, but she eventually snaps out of it, at least with the second ray. The first and the third, oh, even the third, now I think about it, snaps out of it. And much quicker, but she has a dark side in her that's pure evil. I mean, trying to fuse with Adam. Well, not Adam, actually. Turns out the plot twist is that it's Lilith. <sighs> this series gets me spinning on my own mental axes. But once instrumentality actually kicks in, Shinji has the ability to create his own dream world. And at first he's very stumped, but this is where it's interesting. It's because he's in a world of absolute freedom, so a lot of his inner voices were outer voices since everyone's one in this world tell him all right draw the lines that you want he draws some lines and that limits him it sets him to a grounded floor position now we can move from left to right so he needs more dimension eventually he everything gets formed together and he makes his little dream world where he lives in the nuclear family with his real mom and dad and uh and see how Fosica has his and Ray is sort of like this weird friends, but maybe to give you more of that shit. And the original clique they were in with Shinji, that nerdy kid, and the guy that eventually gets crippled in episode 16, they, they have a little funny clique. So that's kind of funny. We had a comic relief moment in the midst of all that darkness. But then after that, this is where the ending gets kind of weird. Shinji starts to reject the instrumentality because he realizes that this is all a mindset that it's not really grounded in reality. It's bullshit in a way. And he wants, he doesn't want to deal with bullshit anymore. He's getting sick and tired of bullshit, so he rejects it. And part two, I'm going to identify my thoughts on this and give those magic three words.